Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. My special guest tonight is Adana Curtin, who's the chair of a very long titled committee, Governor's Committee on the Employment of People with Disabilities, correct? Correct. GCEPD. That is Anna, how most of us say it. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Thank you. Ben's a little late this evening, so if you see him sneak in at some point in the show, um, he'll, he will have arrived on time, or safely anyway. So we always ask our guests to um, talk a little bit about themselves, and if you could do that for us. Sure. So um, I, I came to the Governor's Committee uh, by way of having worked in the world of workers' compensation uh -huh. through the Department of Labor, yeah. that you're familiar. Right. Um, and I, I recognized that there was this opportunity to, to have a voice for injured workers uh, and their return to work after their injury. And so that is what led me to the committee. And um, I had worked previously for the state of Vermont Voc Rehab as a transition counselor, working with youth to mm. encourage them into the world of work, either directly out of high school or after college, and assisting with their employment planning beyond nice. high school. And I had worked at the time with Diane Delmas, who was mm -hmm. the director of Voc Rehab. Who is still here. She I, is. I must say, we had Hugh Bradshaw on the other day, and I was surprised. Um, that Diane was still here. She's been there, thank goodness, because she does a good job. Yeah, she really, she runs a, a great ship yeah, over does. there. Yeah. Um, so I got in touch with her, actually, and I asked her about the committee, and um, she is a member. She is a um, mandatory member, mm -hmm. as state agencies are represented on the committee. And uh, so I was really fortunate to bring those two worlds together, having worked for nice. the two agencies. Um, th at the time, I was working for a private voc rehab company that did workers' compensation disability case management. Um, and so blending those two worlds and really nice. uh, encouraging people to just continue thinking about not only employment of people with disabilities, but retention of employees with disabilities was really the impetus nice. for me. Yeah. Well, I must say, I think things have changed a lot in that, in that world of getting people to work and, um, and certainly keeping them working full time or, and, and a, long, a long time. Um, I asked you what, what's the change? There, there was, something was different when I, because when I was there, it was a little bit of a struggle and um, I'm, I was delighted to see that things are different and I'm, I'm thrilled. So this must be an exciting um, job for you. It really is. Um, the, the Governor's Committee um, has the opportunity to really pull together representation from business people, right. um, people with disabilities, state stakeholders, and service providers. Mm -hmm. So it really great. sparks a great conversation from the many perspectives. That's great. Now that's a pretty, um, we can skip to talk about the committee. It's a pretty large committee, is it not? You've got like 20 23 members, so there's mandatory representatives, I'm sure, from the Department of Labor and um, all, all voc rehab and those kind of things. But are there citizens and people from the outside world? Yes, so we have um, people with disabilities who are um, strong advocates for employment, and um, we are really always so pleased for their input um, above and beyond all. Yeah. Uh, we have business owners and business members nice. who have themselves supported the hiring and retention of people with, people with disabilities, right. um, and then service providers, which is where I fell from my last role um, oh, nice. in the realm. Um, so people who are not employed by the state, but who are providing services yeah. to employing people with disabilities. Now, next week, we are going Tuesday, uh, which is certainly off cycle for when we do these things, to, um, to Waterbury where they have um, equipment uh, that's designated for, to help people with disabilities at work. Yes. And uh, Hugh, Hugh suggested we go, and I'm very excited because I've been doing some research about it, and there's so many new things that are out there that can help people. Yes. Yeah. Actually, my current role as field services manager for Voc Rehab, the assistive technology program falls under um, my 
my world. So oh, it does. Well, we'll be there does. at 1 o'clock next oh, Tuesday, wonderful. I believe. So oh, that's great. Um, I'm bringing one of the cameramen from here, and we're going to shoot off site. Oh, um, because yes. Because I thought uh, that's a visual thing, not a... Oh, you have, well, you have a lot to, to um, oversee. It's a full-time job, I'm assuming. It, is. it is a full-time job. And then job. some, right? It <laughs> is, yes. Good for you. So what is, uh, I, I, when was this established? Um, Nin it, 1963, yeah. originally. And then it was amended some years later. It was originated um, by the Medicaid um, Integration Fund. Mm -hmm and uh, really was charged with informing the governor oh. of any issues related to employing Vermonters right. with disabilities. So, yeah, we wanted to talk about that a little bit later because that's, how do you do that? I mean, how, first of all, it's, it's a small state, but not that small. So how do you know what the disabled uh, folks are dealing with and what the employee, I mean, how do you put that together to be able to advise the governor, and I'm sure with that, um, uh, you know, report, there's some recommendations. Right. So I, I think it happens in a, a bunch of different ways. The committee itself, I think, is an avenue to do that because we have That's all true. those people around the right. table right. who are providing their input. And we start every committee meeting with um, what we call um, mission moments. Mm -hmm. And so we ask everyone around the table what it is that has happened to them between meetings that is to this cause, right? So anything that has any outreach they've had to individuals that have sparked the conversation of employment mm -hmm. and retention, um, anything, any questions that have come in to them, anything they've observed. And so it starts out with a conversation, just keeping it real, you know, right. what what are you seeing out there? What matters to you? What, what are other people telling you who know you sit on this committee that matters to them? Let's talk about it and let's see what we can do with that information. Do you meet with the groups of employers and groups of uh, folks with disabilities? I know, well, we forgot to mention to me, one of your most famous members of the is Sterling Peebles. <laughs> Sterling has been on this show, I don't know, I think four or five times. We've done lots of things on the, on the, and what she's done herself to try to get employers to hire the folks with disabilities. She has a website and um, she's very active that way and always speaking somewhere. Yes. But, um, <laughs> she's a, she, she is a rock star in her own uh, right. She is. Well, she yes. won that. Um, Rising star. Together. Rising star. Can you believe that? I, I, love, I love her to death. And she deserved that yeah. for sure. And she's amazing. She really is. And yes, yeah, so she she is on our committee and has been for for a couple years now. Yeah. And um, she actually helped recruit from the um, Center for Disability Inclusion that oh. is within UVM. Yeah. And so we have Darren McIntyre, oh, who nice. is from there, also sitting on our committee. Nice. Um, yeah, people are drawn to Sterling, yeah, so... She it, kills me. On, on her Facebook, she's got a picture with whatever whatever star, like if she goes to a, <laughs> some convention, she's got a picture with the with whoever the, the keynote speaker or star yeah. is. She's funny. But um, but do you... She belongs with the Green Mountain Advocates, and do you, do you speak with them, or maybe Sterling translates back uh, from the committee, because they're a very active group. Yes, yeah, so we, part of, part of our charge also is to stay involved and build relationships with yeah. other agencies and organizations that have similar missions. So we partner with VCIL often and um, the Vermont Coalition for Disability Rights. Um, and so yes, we are That's attending right. different uh, events that they're putting mm -hmm. on, APSI, um, which Sterling sits on. So yes, we involve ourselves wherever we Green Mountain right. Self-Advocate conferences that right. they hold. Uh, we also have representatives from veterans. We have the Director of Veterans Affairs, oh, Bob nice. Burke on our committee, oh, excellent. and Larry Forsyth, who is with Department of Labor, who assists mm -hmm. employer employees who are veterans yep. getting back to work. Um, so we go to veteran events um, that are held. So we do try and um, just That's maintain great. those relationships. And are employers open to talking to, to you about hiring folks with disabilities? Because 
Um, I, I don't know whether they'd be worried about the addition, maybe if there is additional support that's required um, to hire, but I think what a, what a great feeling of satisfaction to be able to do something like that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it certainly runs the gamut right. of how um, comfortable and willing employers are to be as honest as they need to be, yeah. I think, to ask the questions that pre present that barrier. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, CWS, Hugh Bradshaw, oh, right. um, and now Piper, who you had on yeah. recently, they have done a lot with the, the with Weber and the BAMs to um, to really promote right. the, those open conversations yep. and that idea that um, they really are operating from this dual customer right. approach where um, they they understand that employers have the the needs that need to be met and they have jobs that need to be done and they want a very clear understanding of what that job is so that they can right. introduce people who are a good match. And I think, um, you know, as long as there is that sense of openness um, and that willingness to just have a, a very real conversation, I think it, it breaks down a lot of well, those barriers. And, and, I mean, Hugh walks the walk, talks the talk. Yes. I mean, he, he's like a, a Mary Moulton and other, they <laughs> just, they just believe. Yes. And they love the people that they serve, so. Yes. You can tell that, and I think the clients can can feel that too. I, I you know? absolutely agree, and you know there is really something pretty contagious about that feeling when you see people who want this so bad. They want to succeed. They want a job. They want to be productive and tax and paying. They're hard working and they're working. Yes, yep. and when you see that happen, uh, it's pretty okay. powerful, and you just want to well, keep doing at it. The last Disability Awareness Day, which we'll talk about because it's coming up pretty soon. Um, we were in the cafeteria and the, and the governor came <clears throat> and of course you have a whole room full of, of people uh, with disabilities and the governor was talking about needing people for jobs and you know looking for people and, and I'm sitting thinking to myself, hello, it, this entire <laughs> room would raise their hand and say, you know, pick me exactly because right. they want to work. Mm -hmm. And in a, a lot of them, because oh I know what it was, they were looking at taking away the money of the self-help people that I don't I apologize the for personal that, care attendants. personal care mm -hmm. attendants. and so there were several there Max is uh, I spoke to him for quite a while uh, and these people are successful as long as they have some just a little additional help which doesn't take away from the employer um, they still have to meet their goals and they just have somebody to offer a little help drive them back and forth explain some things to them and they were gonna cut that money and I'm like You've got a room full of people who want to work. How much? It can't be that much money in this bigger scheme of things. Yeah, I think <clears> that <throat> that overriding message that uh, people with disabilities yeah. are underemployed yeah. and um, I, or unemployed at a ratio that does not compare to the general public, and yet statistically they are more loyal employees and. Um, you know, I, I think all of us, right, when you think about it, we gain right. our social network and our self-worth and our identity through work, yeah. and um, it's very important it for people. It's great. Mm -hmm. I just, well, I just think it's amazing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the new technology. Um, I, I just heard a lot about it, and I thought, well, this will be really interesting. Yeah, I, so you must be meeting with Tracy, yes, probably, right, and yep. Graham. And there's was, a, I guess they're having some kind of staff meeting that day, so they're all, whoever is wonderful. all coming in, so I'm going to get a chance to meet with everybody. Yeah, um, it's so. an impressive trial center, and it was previously right in the Capitol Plaza building on the second floor. Oh, no kidding. It used to be over there, yes, and now that the new site is available. It's right at the ground floor Excellent. of the state office complex and it's much larger and the oh, equipment. Nice. I myself took a tour just a few I days it's ago. It's very impressive, so it I'm really, really looking is. forward to that. Um, so, um, how, I guess the employee, I'm, I sometimes struggle with this, how do you, when you first approach an employer, how do you get them to realize the benefit of hiring um, of course, I guess the the job market's real stretch these days. It's hard to find anybody to do jobs. Mm -hmm. But but how do you convince them that this is the right thing to do, and that you would make the right match? Um, 
it's not just it's the person's character and abilities not so much the disabilities it's the abilities that that you're matching right? yeah that's right I, I think it's it's starts with trust and relationship building right. and I think people put a lot of time and energy into fostering those relationships with employers and getting them to understand that this really isn't just about being nice and right. doing something kind, although it is, and it's wonderful. Um, it really is the idea that um, in this process, they will find wonderful employees, right. and that's everyone's goal. And that, you know, hiring people who have um, been introduced to them by supports uh, allows for that, um, that communication to be ongoing and continued so right. that if there is an issue that comes up, there is an opportunity to have help in having those conversations, um, both for the employee and the employer, right. so that if there is miscommunication or misunderstandings, there is a buffer to have those difficult conversations. And are you, I'm sure you and your staff and maybe Hughes are available if something goes awry and some things need to be adjusted and stuff for the employee and the employer. I'm sure that people come and, and help uh, to get things um, back on track. Yeah, that's the whole idea. So f the first part is to be proactive and make sure right. that the job is as great a fit as you could imagine right. it to be for both. And then next would be to figure out if there were some reasonable accommodations that right. be c to be considered Maybe it is AT and maybe it's, you know, using devices that will make the job more successful for someone, right. make the work environment, you know, a better fit. Um, so after trying to accommodate it and seeing if it's the right fit, then yes, then it's right. that ongoing, just checking in um, when needed and just continuing to foster that relationship so that they do feel comfortable That's reaching great. out and and having the conversation. Years, years ago, when I, li I lived in Tarrytown, New York, I worked for a company whose mission it was to hire almost all people with disabilities. Um, uh, I was hired, but and there were several people in my kind of jobs, a lot of traveling and stuff going around. Um, and it was the most uh, encouraging. Nobody paid attention to anybody's disabilities. I mean, it was just, Let's get the work done and let's get moving. It was great. Yeah. At first, I was I wasn't sure what to expect, and I was there maybe a week, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is like any other place, and <laughs> it's regular people and doing regular things, and it was amazing. Yeah. It was just fun, and you didn't think about it after a while. Yeah, fun is a great word, and you know that diversity that um, happens in the right work cultures, right. it improves the environment for everybody, and it does. It creates a, a, just an overall better yeah. feeling. And I, you know, I always think about that for the case of workers' comp too. That yeah. I, you know, I knew that employers who were good about bringing employees back after their right. injury meant that that it was likely that they were having less injuries happening right. in the company right. and that they had probably a higher retention rate because right. they were treating people well right. and that right. always works and right. so companies who tend to hire people with disabilities are overall good employers right, right? and and they probably hire better talent and yeah. keep them well i think they look beyond the, they look at the person yes and it's about the how abilities they think and what yeah. they do and well the ceo of this company was was disabled himself and and he just decided that that's what they're going to do in their company. Uh -huh. and, and it worked great. They were very successful. Yeah. So yeah. it worked I great. I bet they were. So you have a tagline. I guess that's what we call it. Um, it says, barrier-free employment for all employ uh, Vermonters. How did that come about? Well, I think it's the idea that you sort of just touched on, that when we look at people as individuals and their strengths and their abilities, and focus on that um, because all of us, let's be honest, right? All of us have things that we're not as good at <laughs> as others. Well, speak or... <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> yes, that's true. And uh, aren't as strong in yeah. some ways as 
we maybe wish we were or others are. Um, and we've all just landed in positions that have focused on our strengths right. if we're successful in those positions. And so that's really breaking down the barriers. Right. It's really looking at what people's abilities are, looking at people as individuals, figuring out how they do contribute to the work culture and the right. job itself. And that's how you start breaking it down. Right. And then there's the flip side for employers. And I think it's um, you know breaking down the barriers that they see. A lot of times they're myths. And um, a lot of times the concerns that they have are based on things that maybe yeah. others have told them right. or um, you know, and so yeah, preconceived notions exactly. of what it's all about. Yeah. yeah, and so when you're able to dispel those, and um, when we are able to offer exposure of all the successes that happen right. out of these great job matches, I think people respond right. and they they want to bring that into their own right. workplace. Right. So, I think exposure this. The show is, uh, we, we are so appreciative of oh, being well, invited because it's more exposure right. to, to having this conversation right. and encouraging even one employer to, to think about reaching out That's to right. us. And I think if you take a little time to get to know the person, mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about Sterling, I mean, that woman is so funny and she's so sharp. Um, I think she she blew my husband away because I was introducing. <laughs> and she, of course, I've been talking. I talk about Sterling at home all the time. Sterling this. Sterling we that. all do. And Pat. He, he, just, like, he just said oh, she's amazing. I mean, she is. She she's is just amazing. So, she's so quick yeah. and, and funny as all get out. Oh my God. Yeah. But anyway, but um, I sadly I don't know. I've got to watch the time here. I talked too much. I sadly I went to um, a funeral. Um, down in, in New York, in Tarrytown, where I used to live. And there was a woman sitting opposite me. I didn't know her, and she was with her daughter, who was uh, a Down syndrome, a ch uh, not a child. She was a woman. Mm -hmm. And this woman did not think like Vermonters with children with disabilities. She, I don't know how this child is ever going to exist when mom passes away or gets too old to think. She is so thinks this child really can't do much. And I was looking at her face and her eyes, and she's all, she's alive and well. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about some of the things that we do here in Vermont. And the mother, oh, no, 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 oh, no. Thank you for yeah. Oh, trying. I was. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you've missed an opportunity. Because I, I could tell she she yeah. wanted to communicate, and she wanted to be part of, the, part of what was going on. And, and mom just. Was I think she was afraid. Yeah, you know? I, I think afraid. that is where it comes from. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, as a transition counselor, when I first moved to Vermont and I took the job as a transition counselor, I did. I witnessed parents who ran the gamut right. of that level of, of protecting versus allowing right. that what we call fa failure, risk of failure, right? right? And so the ability to let, we all do that as parents anyway, right. but there is, sure, an added fear around right. that. Um, and we have, at Voc Rehab, there is the Transition Counselor Program. Right. Tara Howe is the manager of that program, and it is a great effort um, that is put into having these conversations yeah. within now uh, much younger and yeah. getting involved in this idea of transition as young as 14 and wow. potentially younger yeah. um, to really start to, to show what's possible and yeah. have those conversations. I think this mom needed to talk to somebody and yes. I said, why don't you come to Vermont? Because <laughs> she was looking for, what are the, we've, we've abolished them here. Sheltered workshops. She They closed the one that her daughter was in and she mm -hmm. was very upset about yes. it. And I said, well, we don't, we don't have them in, in Vermont because we think they can do much better things for them rather than the, the, you know, the sheltered workshop approach. So That is actually when I graduated from college, I, my professor uh, was also a program director at Goodwill oh. in Massachusetts. Yeah. And that she got me my first job out of college as an operations coordinator uh -huh. at Goodwill. And my job was to help transition people out of this sheltered workshop that wow. was in Salem, Mass. Yeah. And um, it was a wonderful experience because I did, I got to see that 
that change. Oh, and, the spark in their eyes. Yeah. And like, whoa, I did this. Yes. And the people who thought they couldn't, yeah. who did. Yeah. And um, how that trickles out. And I, you know, I, there were still a lot of shelter yeah. workshops in Massachusetts at the time that I moved to Vermont. And uh, when I moved here and learned that that was not going on, it was, right. it was a happy day. Yes. yes. Uh, well, I know. <laughs> We talk about that a lot. Now you publish, I have to get on this um, newsletter list, you publish a quarterly free uh, email, right, e-newsletter. E, uh, e yes, and abilities. It's called Call Abilities. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about what you try to cover in the newsletter and different stories, if there's any one that you might want to share with us? Sure. So it, it, it tends to be quarterly. Sometimes we put out special, oh. uh, special ones um, for special reasons. Um, we always like to highlight uh, the award winners for our Spirit of the ADA Awards. Right. We like to hire, uh, um, highlight if we've been to certain events. We do the Business Expo every oh, year. Oh, do great. Yes, we have been. I, I learned that I think this year they're doing away with the, the B2B. It's almost like speed dating, but you get to be in front of an employer for I think it's oh, 15 minutes. Oh, no kidding, minutes. really? Oh. Yeah, I, I have to find out for sure if that's true. Um, but so we were scheduled right out. I think sometimes we would see 13 nice. employers and we would just explain what it is that we're looking to do and people would sign up in advance on this schedule to be partnered up and have these no conversations. Kidding. I've been there most every year and I, I don't know where I've been. I yeah. guess maybe I didn't understand what it was. That yeah. sounds great. It was upstairs on the I second floor. That. Yes, it was that it was, was cool. a wonderful experience and I, I would be sad to know that they really did do away with it. Yeah. Um, but a lot of employers that signed up, you know, the first question I would ask is, what was it that drew you to right, right. meet with us? And um, the first thing was usually governor's committee and people yeah, right, just right, attach right. sort of a, a starstruck way about it. Um, and then next was uh, employees with disabilities. And a lot of the people who would come and sit down with us had family members um, or they themselves had a disability yeah. and wanted to tell their story yeah. or the story of their loved one who went to work and wanted to just sort of promote that. Good for them. Um, and they were already doing that at their at their companies yeah. and wanted to let us know that they were doing it, which we very much appreciated. Nice. Uh, we had this wonderful um, communication with Vermont Gas when mm -hmm. we were there one year. Um, and they informed us about their efforts with veterans and disabled oh, veterans nice. and um, how much they made an effort to when people were deployed mm -hmm. to bring them back after their deployment and made every attempt to Great. make that a successful smooth transition back for oh, them. That's yeah. excellent. Good for Vermont yeah. Gas. Nice for them. So um, it's on, people can sign up for this, can they not, uh, through your website? So for the newsletter for the abilities, newsletter, yes, we would love that. Yes, it's um, and they can just go online and and you can put your name and email address. Mm -hmm. in. Okay, I'm going to do that. Yes. Now you mentioned yes. awards. You yes. said last uh, October was Disability Awareness Month, and you give out awards. Could you talk a little bit about um, what you do for sure. recognition? Sure. Sure. That's sort of our our overriding event of the year. Oh, nice. um, so we start in about April where we outreach to get nominations oh, for nice. employers who are representing the spirit of the ADA, right. which is the name of the award. Um, and so that falls under a couple of different categories. So it's employers who are accommodating the application process. Uh -huh. So employers who may interview in a different way, who may override their usual practice of online only applications who will be willing to you know do it in sort of an old nice. fashioned meet and right. greet right. Um, perform informational interviews um, and then for people who accommodate the workplace in the way that you might imagine through assistive tech devices right. and assistive technology uh, or to modify the actual job in a way that makes it work for the individual, uh, maybe accommodating hours, um, hmm. whatever that might look like. And then lastly, who really do sort of just embrace and encourage the idea of making it a real, just a very natural 
-hmm. landing spot for mm -hmm. a person. And so for the past few years, uh, so when we started doing this, we I think had about three award winners and then it just kept growing and we kept redesigning it. So it is now at the point where this year I think we gave out 17 awards wow. uh, statewide and we opened it this year to the general public for nominations. Before that, we had been mostly going through CWS and Weber oh, and Vogue right, Rehab right. who were offering up um, nominations of yes. employers that they knew. And we realized that there are a lot of employees with disabilities yeah. who do not receive supports from state government right. or service providers. And so they may want to be recognizing their employers or you know people in the community who know of these employers sure. who want to recognize them so uh, we were pretty pretty jazzed to do that and it worked out really well we had um, this one young man from Williamstown who is an excavator who uh, was on a snowboarding trip with his school in high school and had an accident that um, resulted in a spinal cord injury and he was very skilled and talented mathematically and had thought he was going in the direction of CAD design and one day his dad rented an excavating machine to just work in the backyard and he got up into it and uh, decided that that feeling of being in this excavator um, was really what was what felt right for him and so he went into business for himself as an excavator and then was hired um, by American Consulting and Engineering in Williamstown um, to do work for them and this business um, just an amazing group of people who uh, they had their shop that uh, at the time did not have wheelchair accessibility. Right. They built a ramp wow. um, just because he needed to get in and get his paycheck and right. get his work orders and um, never thought anything of it. Just that's what he what needed to do right. to get his employee who right. he respected and valued into work. Wow. And um, so the employee, Eric, nominated this employer. Um, we chose this award winner um, and every year when we compile our list we reach out to the governor and the governor's office right. and compare schedules for our month long of October events we usually try and do two a day um, and break them up regionally and so we presented him with the schedule and and this was one that we knew mattered a lot to the governor he talks often about his dad uh, yes. returning right as a, a veteran yes. um, who is an amputee yeah, double and amputee. double amputee right. and working for BGS downtown um, and so the governor attended this award oh, really yes it yeah. was it was pretty powerful and um, so you know those stories are just invaluable yeah, and right. that recognition to both the employee and the employer by the governor and by the community is, is right. pretty great. And a lot of times, uh, legislators come out to our awards Good. and- um, Do you we, have it where, at the Capitol Plaza? No, or? we have the awards themselves, when we're presenting the awards, we have them at the work site. Oh, perfect. And so Absolutely. they can invite yeah. all their employees yeah. and then nice. their local legislators, anyone um, that so they- So the governor went to this uh, guy's uh, work Yes, wow, and it turns out that was who worked on, I, I, I want to say maybe they drilled his well or oh, something really? that right? 15 years ago oh, when he excellent. pulled up he said I've been here before oh, <laughs> and nice. yeah so that was pretty great yeah. yes uh, the governor tells that story about his dad a lot and he does every time I've heard it for you know when it's appropriate he tells the story and it's always so emotional for him yeah because um, I know he had great feelings for his dad and his dad just did great family great yeah I think th four boys I'm Four not. Boys? I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> but anyway, a whole bunch of kids, and life was life was great. Yeah. So that's yes. great. So speaking of disabilities, um, I think we, we were supposed to have Elaine Casey with you, who's a vice chair and also executive coordinator for the GCEBP. Can you say that without GCEPD? That would take a little practice. And. Um, 
Could you tell her story a little bit, and especially what she's done with the with the teddy bear company? That is, I'm gonna. There's some pictures of the bears, and I'm gonna put oh, them on the, at the end of the show. Yeah, so, so people can see this. I, I, we, we are so disappointed not to have her here, right. but she's asking that we could, after Disability Awareness Day, if we could come back again, talk about what we did there, absolutely, uh, introduce it to Eileen, and um, and ask her in real time her story. But the short of it is, um, she is a runner and um, was wearing out her shoes, and one shoe. And she kept going to, I think it was New Balance, to uh -huh. ask for new shoes. Right. And the man who had known her for a long time, because she was such a runner, said, you should not be wearing out these shoes the way you are. Uh, you need to go see a doctor. Uh -huh. And she did. And the doctor said, you have cancer. And, and it showed up through the shoes? And well, her feet, she, she was having pain oh. in her legs. Oh. And she thought it was the shoe. So oh, she thought oh, if I she see. kept replacing the shoe, oh. um, the pain would go away. Um, but the doctor confirmed that she had cancer and that notified it, her very quickly that she would need to have her leg amputated. Yes. Oh, my. So she did. Um, and she was at the time working for WCAX and um, at, in sales. And so her job required her to really hustle, right? Yep. And so she. Um, started the process of uh, being fitted for a prosthetic and realized that insurance did not cover it. And she had great insurance coverage through WCAX. Insurance didn't cover a prosthetic It device. did not. Um, I can't even imagine the rationale that went behind no. that. No, and she will tell you what they I said. Yeah. <laughs> um, I bet I'll be angry. So <laughs> she went to Vogue Rehab and asked for assistance for assistance for the cost of the, the limb. Right. Um, and they started the process of trying to help with that and also told her about low interest loans that right. she could apply right. for. Um, ultimately, they were able to secure funding to cover the cost right. of her prosthetic limb. Um, and then she, in the meantime, um, decided that she would single-handedly start advocating for this to right. <laughs> go away. Right. So she worked to develop legislation with her legislator at the time, yeah. and, and they put that bill up and it passed. And she has since been successful reaching out to other states to help Good. other states Good also well, advocate for that. You definitely have that. to come back because I'd love to hear that story. It's a great from story. The source. That's that's amazing. And what's keeping her today? And she told me that she, you know, gave me permission to share is that she was flying back from a, a family visit oh. in Florida, and her her leg was swollen from the air pressure. Right. And um, because of that, they needed to remove the prosthetic, oh. and it was difficult for her to get off the plane and then here today. Um, and she said, you know, it really goes to show what accessibility matters yeah. and, and what accommodating matters, because that was completely out of her control, right? right. She, right. she is a mover and a shaker, and her will does not stop her. but. Physically, you know, that was out of yeah. her control. And if, you know, you imagine what that's like in other people's jobs who yeah. are traveling yeah. for work and would have that situation. And if an employer was not understanding what that would mean for someone's livelihood right. when it's completely well, out I'm of sure. her I'm control. I'm the airline was sick. They, they took care of it. They would know how to do that, I yes. hope. Yes, yes. Yeah. She said she good was in her. good hands. Yes. Good. Well, thank her very much for all of that. So tell us what she did with this. Is I love this. The Vermont <laughs> Teddy Bear Company. This is just spectacular. So the Vermont, because she was a runner um, previously, and they had known that, and um, continues to run. And she is also, I believe, chair of the Vermont Adaptive, oh, no kidding. adaptive right. Sports. Right. Um, and so she, she remains very active in athletics. She organizes at TRAP. She convinced me to run it last year, which was wonderful. Right. A 5K, 10K, and a half marathon right. that they do in the trails at TRAP. Right. Um, and she herself has a running blade. I was just going to ask yes. you if she has that. Um, she does. I uh, forget what they call it, but I guess the running blade. Those things I are fascinating yes. to me. I would love to see one 
in a, I see yes. it on TV, but just to see how that works. I we'll mean, make really her works. wear it yes, to the I interview. Yes, <laughs> And she can, yeah. she can run yeah, a little lap for us. Well, we know it from the Blade Runner. Yes, from the, yes. Yeah. So, and she, she runs the Vermont City Marathon yep. um, on a relay for WCAX each Great. year. Um, so the teddy bear company found this out and they were, um, they had decided that they would indeed make um, make teddy bears right. that showed this wow. side of life. And so they made a running bear and a, a, a veteran, yeah. a disabled veteran yeah. bear. And I believe there was a third there, that was yeah, also represented. Yeah, there were four of them. Four? I'm trying okay. to remember now what, they, but there were four. And the difference was, they said, is they used to, when, if I called up and said, could you make a bear for my niece who's uh, has lost her leg, they would do that for the niece. But now they decided to have a line mm -hmm. of, of bears in advance of anybody asking for them. And apparently it's going really well. How, yeah. how fabulous. Yeah, it's pretty. And there are more and more companies that right. are just building that into American Girl doll now. Right has a wheelchair oh, really? um, for oh. dolls. Um, yeah, uh, Barbie also. Um, so yeah. I, That's great, good yeah, for them. It's, it's improving slowly yeah. but surely. So is there, what, do they just sell the bears or are there things that are written with the bear to encourage the, the new bear's oh, owner or anything? That we're gonna have to ask Eileen yeah. when she gets oh, back, I, I think don't what know. an opportunity to, to talk about different you know, places you can go yeah. for resources, and um, yeah, that's great. She must be very. She did this on her own. She, yeah, she Speaking really. Of she, <laughs> she has, she has her hands in many things. That's she, great. That's she's great. a pretty powerful woman. Yes, yeah, that's excellent. Well, I, I had um, a woman that makes the the Vermont Brownie Company, uh, Vermont Brownies. She's now with um, the the Vermont the Teddy Bear Company, and it's okay. a. Bears and brownies. Okay, and, and right. you can buy you can buy the bears that come along with the brownies. So they're being very, very creative over there. Wonderful. Well, the, those Good. are those are so well made. We should we should do. Yes, a show. I have one for each of my four children. <laughs> oh, do you? Yes, I, I have one. I have a legislator <gasps> do uh, you? doll. When I was in legislatures, I somebody gave me a legislative oh, doll with a, so with a vest and a little carry-on thing, and it was, <laughs> you, you know had the seal. Oh. So um, and then that's going to. Does she? Do you guys take that places and, and use the bears in, at all? Or? We haven't yet, but yeah. that's a good that's idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just to if you're visiting people. Yeah. With, that's great. I good think for you. you know, if if we could talk about Disability Awareness Day, that's yes, please, pretty let's exciting. Do that, that's and coming up, and you also need. I'd love you to read um, the names of the companies that got the awards because sure. I think they deserve some recognition too. Sure. I'm I'm yeah. thinking that maybe we'll bring the bears and have them you that should, day. I mean, you should. Yes, I really How should. How nice to see somebody. I mean, I got a big kick out of the legislative bear. I so and my husband has one of a. He was a state trooper, so he's uh -huh. got the state trooper bear. Uh. And. You know, they just hey, that's me. It's, yeah, it's cool. I know it's, it's wonderful. a bear. It's, yeah, it's still cool anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, for the past few years, I think this will be our third. We have pulled together the award winners from the previous year and the current year, and we invite them over to the Capitol Plaza on Disability Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, we have a work group, sort of a, a working um, session right. with these employers, where we pick their brains, um, ask them for sort of their best practices mm -hmm. of hiring people and retaining people with disabilities, and asking for their advice really on how to get this message out. So earlier you asked, how do you break down these barriers? Right. We have found that it is a, a real powerful way to do that is mm. by using employers to talk to other employers, right? right? So they listen more when it's someone who's gone through exactly what they're going through um, with regard to their shortage of workforce, right. um, you know, filling those positions that are hard to fill. Um, and so when they hear from other employers that this is an opportunity on how to make for an even better workforce, they listen. So we use this opportunity to pull them together and ask them those questions. It's facilitated by this woman, Tiffany, who is part of workforce development at CCV. And um, 
it's a, a pretty organized morning and then we leave there and go over the last two years the governor has uh, accommodated us in mm -hmm. a way that he brings us into his chamber and he meets with all the employers Great. and thanks them for their efforts um, asks them um, to share any experiences Great. or ask any questions that they want to uh, and then we have arranged to have them recognized on the house nice. floor nice. and so one of the legislators will stand up in the past it's been bill botso oh, um, he's not there anymore he, he is didn't, not he didn't run this year no nope, yeah. he did not but mark uh mark oh um oh my god i should know and mark who yes yeah uh, so he this year has agreed Marcotte, to sorry. Marcotte, Mark Marcotte. That is hot off the press. That yeah. just happened in the last couple of days. Yeah. Uh, has agreed to oh, be the good. one to to uh, introduce them. Nice. So they come into the chamber. A lot of times it's the first time some of these employers have ever been to the state house. Oh. So it's pretty exciting for them to come in and meet the governor, and right. then to go in and stand up and have the legislators good. notice them. Um, so that's been pretty wonderful and. Um, I, you know, I, I think this year um, our topic is going to be, we, each year we pick a topic, last year it was transportation being a real issue, going around to the awards. Right. We had been asked by one of the award winners who was the um, aquatic center down in the, the West Lab White oh, River right. area. They had talked to us about how they were trying to get more employees um, who were from downtown who would be able to take a bus right. and uh, stop right there at the center but they could not make this bus stop a reality uh -huh. and so they were trying to figure out how else to make it possible for employees to get to their location uh -huh. and so we got in touch with Ross McDonald from Go Vermont right. who has undergone this right. big right um, to make more transportation oh, solutions Great. and so he came in and he spoke to the employers and offered himself up as a resource and showed the launch of his new nice. Go Vermont website uh, which was pretty wonderful and then this year uh, we are looking to establish a Vermont professional network grief, out of these yes yeah. and and I think every year they say to us contact us throughout the year if there's right. anything you think right. we can do and so I think we we have identified this as an opportunity to if we form this committee of professionals right. who are who are doing this we will start to use them in a bigger right. way and so that's what we are going to jump Excellent. start Kudos yes, on the sure. 27th. Yeah, I was sad that Bill left because but this year after him trying for years, this man was so dedicated to workforce development, yes. they finally passed a bill that is so focused on workforce development and technical education. Um, I just, uh, so he was in here talking about the bill and I was, I was so glad he left on that note that yes. he finally, finally got them to pay attention and to pass this bill. So we maybe did. they are paying attention to workforce development. Yeah, I think they have to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, we, Bill Bata was our, uh, we gave him a special award this year for oh, uh, being legislator of the year for yes. this effort yes. that, that he has definitely just been wonderful at. And uh, we had also this year made a special award for a state agency award. Oh, great. Um, last year, VTrans was nominated as and won the Spirit of the ADA Award. Great. And we decided that we need to each year try and make an effort to recognize state agencies that are that makes taking a big, this on. I tell you, having been ahead of a couple of agencies, that makes a huge difference with employees that somebody, because mm -hmm. usually they don't get the awards. They yes. get the, hey, you work for me, what are you right. doing sort of deal. <laughs> right. And just to thank them, um, yeah. it makes a big difference. And they deserve it, besides. They do. And yeah. this year it was, um, was the, um, the Veterans Home. Oh, nice. And the Veterans Home has done a tremendous job not only at hiring people with disabilities, but they are that double-edged sword where they also bring back their employees after they've been injured. Oh, they oh, do a very good job nice. at bringing their employees back. So yeah. uh, we recognized them nice. down there at the Veterans Home. Nice. And Bill Bozzo was also recognized during oh, that sweet. same event. Nice. So it was a, a really big turnout um, in Bennington. What well, surprised me when I, when I was doing my research on Bill, what a great artist he is. Yes. And a recognized artist. Yes. Um, he's got some pieces of artwork all around 
around the state. It's just, yes. it's like, Bill, where do you find <laughs> the time for this? So, um, and talk about Disability Awareness Day is February 27th. 27th. So it's all day at the State House and uh, the Vermont Center, uh, the Vermont Coalition for Disability Rights is the umbrella organization mm -hmm. that really uh, spearheads the day and they um, really pull out all the stops. So all day long there are workshops and um, some rallying and um, some advocacy and education. There are booths set up to uh, really represent different organizations that are uh, on the front of disability awareness. Right. And, um, and so each year they pick a different theme. I haven't learned yet what the theme is for this, this year. Um, and then they sort of make the day around whatever that theme is by having workshops on right. the theme. And there was, uh, two years ago it was workforce. And um, that was a, a pretty wonderful day nice. for the governor's committee to yeah. be to be part of that day right. and blend those missions. That's yes, great. I'm trying to decide. There was a one work group. Max Barrows was um, facilitating it, and they had different groups of people come up with a theme and present um, some, some personal stories about what happened to them under this theme. And there, um, I showed it a lot on the on the video we did. These people have just they were just amazing to be able to share their feelings and to, to do it in a way that was was really meaningful. Um, I was sitting there kind of gulping things down a little bit because I live in a, uh, I sadly live in a cocoon sometimes I think because I don't see um, what's happening out there sometimes. Um, two people and the things that they deal with, discrimination against the disabled and stuff and and, uh, and I feel, I don't know why, but I, I just don't, I don't. And I, I, when you hear them, because sometimes when I hear, oh, there's all these problems, I'm like, where? But they know. Yeah. And, and, they, and they, were, they weren't mad. They weren't, um, you know, shaken. They were just saying, here's what happened to me, and here's how I felt. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, yeah. powerful. Yeah, the endurance and the perseverance right. that is witnessed through these people yeah. who just every day yeah. work twice as hard to do, do twice as much, and it's it's powerful. Yeah, it is. No it doubt was, about it. Was it. Quite, uh, I made sure it was. I kept that on the show, um, and I hope that people watch it. So we are running out of time a little bit. Is there anything else that uh, you would like to talk about that we didn't touch on? I, I really would just encourage employers um, to reach out and to ask the questions and there is no wrong question. Uh, we are open and willing to hear any concern or uh, field any interest. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in this labor market, people need to be as creative as they can to find good employees and that is what we are offering, the opportunity to enhance their workforce and their work culture and to bring on some really qualified, wonderful people. Right. And I think it's important for them to know you don't just make the connection and and leave. You're there to help them and the employee whenever, right? Absolutely. Forever, ever. Absolutely, That's as good. long as either of them or both of them want us. That's great. Yes. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. I thank you, and you are thank welcome you. back anytime. Okay, great. Um, so listen, thanks for tuning in. I know you enjoyed this program. We'll see you next week, and in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.